but stop making excuses, stop whining, stop, right? Get at it. No excuses, just dominate. Action. What up, Harpreet? You said you won't be able to stay for long, it's okay. We're gonna go through this real quick. I've been spending all day today filling out a grant, trying to get some money for y'all so I can bring you guys some more great stuff. And uh, it's the first time I fill out a grant in a long, long time, and it was crazy. Um, so I'm doing this to literally clear my mind and have some fun today, because I like talking to you guys, helping you guys out. Um, if this is your first time joining us, I'm Dr. Pinesett, in case you were confused. Uh, I am the study doc. Uh, Cecilia, what up? Harpreet, what up? Ooh, lots of hearts coming in. Heart back at you guys. If you're gonna see my eyes flipping back and forth, it's because I'm looking at your comments. So I'll pull Cecilia on screen right there. She can hang out with me right there on the screen. Um, we are live, 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 live action right now. And today we're gonna talk about two keys to medical school interviewing. And the way I like to approach anything when I teach you guys how to do something, and again, if you guys don't know, I'm Dr. Andrew Pines and I'm the study doc. And what I do is I help you guys become successful in whatever you wanna pursue. And part of that is medical school, since I have, what, successfully gone to medical school, gone to Stanford, and I have spent the better part of a decade teaching other students how to navigate to medical school. And I actually got a really cool notification this morning from a student who got an MD and a DO acceptance yesterday. Um, so we'll be living her doctor's dreams. And she was thanking me for the effort I put into the interview boot camp. And so today I wanna to bring to you guys a little bit of my interview framework that's really gonna clarify interviewing for you. And the way that I like to teach, Nico, what up? Razine, hello. Tevin is a first year dental student checking in from Minnesota, what up? Tevin, are you in the study course? Because we've got a couple dentists, I'm actually gonna do a dental event. I'm gonna do a dental event in February out in Maryland uh, for the pre-dental students and for the dental students teach you guys how to study. Uh, but anyway, all right, so I like to take things and make frameworks out of them. I don't know about you guys, but whenever you, I feel like the best teachers I've had and from the educational literature, frameworks are where it's at. And it kind of goes back to what I teach you guys about studying that you have to create frameworks for all the information you're gonna learn and ways to organize that information. So what I do is I create frameworks with anything you guys have to do so that way you understand the parameters that you're working with so you can be successful. Does that make sense to everybody? So I'm gonna give you briefly my overarching framework for medical school interviewing that I think is gonna clarify what you're trying to do in the interview. Zach, what up? David, hello, um, in the interview setting. So, here we go. <clears throat> As I teach you guys this framework, okay, I'm going to use my boy Snoop Dogg, Snoop D O G. And actually, I was listening to Gin and Juice this morning. I actually got back in the gym for the first time ever today before the grant. I feel like I had to pump some iron before I said I'd do a grant. Um, but Snoop Dogg recently, if you guys didn't see, did you guys see Snoop Dogg got in trouble at the University of Kansas? Anybody see this? Am I the only one who saw this? I'm so hip. I'm so in the news. You guys see that? I am deep in the streets, y'all. Deep. Who saw Snoop got in trouble for performing at the University of Kansas? This is the whole predicate of all this stuff. So if you guys don't didn't see this, I would have to explain it. I'm just gonna put this up as I like that. Sup. All right. Well, if you didn't see it, if you did see it, let's break it down. Yes. So, <laughs> exactly, less miles approved. So if you guys didn't see it, um, every year a lot of college basketball programs, actually a lot of high school basketball programs do it too, this is a fundraiser, is before the basketball season kicks off, they have a big midnight madness or a hoop it up, something or other, but essentially it's a night where they invite a bunch of people, charge money for tickets, and people come to the gym and they have carnival games, food, they have all these things, it's like a big party, and then at the end, the basketball team scrimmages and then you know have some big finale. And so University of Kansas is a big time basketball program. Um, and so they had Snoop Dogg come to campus and perform as part of their basketball like kickoff event. And <laughs> University of Kansas had him out. And afterward, the head basketball coach at the University of Kansas had to issue a formal apology to anyone who may have been offended by Snoop's performance. And he blasted Snoop, essentially, saying that they didn't know that Snoop was going to come and he was going to bring strippers and he was going to be shooting money out into the crowd and that he was going to perform unedited versions of his songs. And <laughs> Snoop's rebuttal was, I am Snoop Dogg and if you book me, you're going to get the real Snoop Dogg. 
And I thought it was hilarious because it really, really points a picture and there's some valid lessons in there for you guys in terms of your ability to interview effectively and successfully. And one of the, like, the big mistakes that I see students make is not respecting what the interview is and what they expect from you. And so there's two key lessons I want to point out to you guys when I talk about the framework of, of interviewing. And for overall in general, for medical school admissions, there are two main things you're trying to do when you apply to medical school. You are trying to be the two D's as I call them, distinct and distinguished. So you want a medical school to know that you are uniquely you, you are distinct, there is something awesome and different about you that they need to round out their diverse medical class. Right? And diversity is not just skin color, it's not just background, but it's experiences you've had through your life. Cash, what up? Um, I'll be back up at Stanford next, next month uh, for Dean Garcia's retirement. I'll be up there. Um, so uh, it's, it's being distinct, it's being different. The second part is being distinguished, meaning you are excellent. Right? You are above average in at least something, and hopefully more than one thing, in your application that translates over to the interview and that you're trying to do the same thing. Be distinct and be distinguished. And in this Snoop encounter where they book Snoop to come out, and Snoop comes out and he does what he always does, which is bring the ruckus, right? And bring his show. And for you guys as students, the number one mistake that I see a lot of students make is that they go into interview mode in the interview. You guys know what I'm talking about? What's, what's interview mode? Yes. Yes, my name is Andre. Yes, yes, I've done research. The uh, molecular properties of the structures that we were identifying are uh, clearly, right? And you go into this robot zombie interview mode and you're horribly boring. And you clean yourself up, right? You, you like, you take this beautifully colorful and vibrant package that is you and you dumb it down and you water it down and you become this plain, boring cardboard figure in front of the interviewer. You don't need to do that. They don't need you to be anything you're not. The number one thing you need to do is be authentic. They are inviting you for an interview because they like you. They feel like you would be qualified to go to the medical school. They like what they saw on paper. So now all you have to do is bring that same person with you to the interview. And what you guys fail to recognize, you think, oh, I gotta be something spectacular, I gotta be something different, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta button it up. No, be you. Right? As, as you guys see, I talk the way I talk, I am the way I am, I believe what I believe, and I believe it 365 days a year, I'm consistent. And whether you love me, whether you hate me, you know exactly who I am and why I am unique, because I can only be me, and I don't try to be anybody else. But for you guys going to the interview, you feel all this pressure, because for your whole life, you never felt like you were quite good enough, right? You're always trying to like get one more pat on the back and one more person to say that you are okay and that you're enough. And the interview becomes the ultimate culmination of that where you feel so insecure, you feel so nervous, right? You're sweating, palms are sweaty, right? You get that behind the knee sweat, right? All that good stuff, your toes are sweaty. And you go into robot mode or you go into falsely representing yourself. And when you're not authentic, guys, it comes through, it's, it's easy to see when someone's being themselves and when someone's putting something on, right? And it's part of the reason why I like, as, as part of this, my, my rejuvenation on social media, me being back on social media, I'm not doing any polished videos. It's just gonna be me. Authentically me, every single time, right? Whether it's live or it's not live, let's just talk, right? Let's let me be me and let you be you and let's learn together. So when you guys go to an interview, you must be authentic. And if you are inauthentic, it's easy to tell and they will call you out on it. And to take it all the way back to what you can do as a pre-med to make sure that your interview is authentic, is to live authentically as a pre-med. Who has heard about the dreaded box checker? Oh, I don't wanna do that because I'm worried about being a box checker. I'm worried about being a box checker. A box checker is a person who has no clear discernible pattern to their behavior and what they did in pre-med. And when you live scatterbrained in pre-med and you're doing things just to do them and they're not, you're not passionate about it and they don't represent what you wanna do, you then put yourself in a position where you have to do the interview and you have to reflect passion. You have to reflect authenticity. You have to reflect, right, that you're gonna be this great medical student and you're unable to do it because you've been living a lie for four years or six years or some of you guys like 10 years by non-traditional pre-meds. Live the truth as a pre-med and let that continue into your interview and recognize that even if something is strange about your 
pre-med or about your application, those are good things. Being non-traditional is a good thing. And I actually had a student, and actually, is Harpreet still on here? Did he leave? Harpreet teaches um, some form of calmly mixed martial arts. There's a couple of them, you know, move your feng shui around, whatever it is, right? He teaches that for senior citizens. I want to say Kim Chi, but that is not correct. Uh, but he teaches this for the senior citizens to help them, right, have stress. Harpreet, what is it called, please? Don't have me say Kim Chi like I'm ignorant on this live, right? Like, like don't say Kim Chi when you're referring to martial arts in your interview. That might be frowned upon. Keep that authentic self back in the drawer. Qigong or Tai Chi. There we go. Combo, okay? <laughs> this is a wreck. <laughs> I really said kimchi, but tai chi, that's what I meant to say. Thai iced tea, tai chi. Um, so he, this is his one of his activities, that he teaches this, because he's interested in it, and then he found a way to take his interest in these forms and then apply it in a healthcare setting of a senior citizen center. And so he's doing not only his healthcare experience, but he's also getting his volunteer experience, and he's also making an impact, and he's also what? Living his authentic passion. And so he's double dipple, tri triple dipping, being efficient to fill out his pre-med resume and also love the experience, love the, the progress as he moves towards medical school, right? And so if he does that, he's going to get into his interview and they're going to say, well, actually, here you did Tai Chi. That's weird. Why did you do that? And he's going to light up and say, Tai Chi is the best. And he's going to start doing some in the room. And when it comes time to get in that final decision room, they're going to be like, oh, he was the guy who was doing Tai Chi on top of the desk. We want him. Right, because that's his distinct nature. That is him. That is authentic. So, does everybody understand that? The very first thing you must do is be authentic in your interview, and that starts with being authentic as a pre-med when you are first starting out. From moment one, be the truth. Right, be you. You are enough, but be the best version of you. Does that make sense, to everybody? Are we good? Like the video right now if you know what I'm saying right now. If you hear what I'm saying about this. If you understand what I'm saying, let me know. Comment in the box, like the video right now so I can see we're on the right path. And you guys have gotten my first point, which is that you must be yourself. Stop trying to fake it. Just be, okay? And be your best self. All right, cool, I see my comments now. Second thing, all right, the second point that you guys have to do on the interview. You guys have to be willing, not only to be yourself, right? But you have to recognize that what you do is awesome. The unique way you talk, your accent, the words you use, the way you put them together, the cadences you use, all that flavor is the interview. How you dress within the margins is all your flavor, right? If you go in and you strip all the flavor away, what's left? Bland, gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan-friendly ice cream. Tastes like terribleness. And I can say that as a father of two kids who don't do dairy. That stuff tastes awful. And it's crazy, I bought one of these, I bought these, these chocolate-covered ice cream bars. They're not even real ice cream because they're not dairy. And these things don't melt. I'm like, wait a minute, how can you have ice cream that doesn't melt? Something is wrong here. But some of you guys fear your background. And when I talk about your flavor, it's the way you talk, it's everything you present, but then it's also your experiences. In the sense that some of you guys are ashamed or you think people are gonna judge you for things you've done in your past that aren't necessarily bad things, but that you are not the most proud of. For example, I have a student and his parents, okay, are migrant field workers, okay? And he was ashamed to talk about growing up the son of day laborers and field workers. And he thought that people would judge him and think that he didn't belong. And so he allowed that fear of, of establishing his true and, and his culture and all those kind of things to keep him from sharing that as a pre-med. But then also in the interview, when they were asking him about his upbringing, he made himself seem more bland than he was by not talking about where he came from. Instead, just listing the place. Oh, I come from this valley. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all guys come from the hood. It's okay. Listen, I come from the hood. It is what it is. Some of you guys come from nice areas. This is the other thing that happens is, right, is, is rich shame. How many guys 
are rich people and you feel rich in it. I get this all the time because I'm a right. I'm I'm the black disadvantaged student, so people are like, "Oh, you can't relate to my wealthiness. You can't help me. I'm I'm rich, and you know what I mean. If I if I'm rich, I can't get into medical school, right? You hear people who are Asian say this. I'm Asian. I can't get into medical school. Too many Asians. Can't do it. There's nothing wrong with being rich. Don't be afraid to say yes. I have boatloads of cash in the bank. But it makes the hard work and the dedication I put in to get all these accomplishments done actually even more impressive because I could have just chilled and not done this. I got money in the bank stacked up. But I've decided that I want to make an impact. I've decided that I want to pursue medicine despite the, the lack of financial need. So whoever you are, we're gonna be authentic. And then, right, this is our distinctness. And then we're gonna make sure that we continue to be distinct by letting them know exactly who we are. And then the last thing, as you guys go into the interview, right, so we're distinct, we've cleared that up. The second thing is being distinguished. This is your opportunity, guys, to make an impression. These interviewers interview hundreds of students throughout the cycle. What are you doing in the interview to stand out above and beyond all the other qualified candidates that interview? Because everyone who interviews is qualified. So what are you doing beyond the numbers, beyond your activities? What are you doing on interview day to make them like you, to ingratiate, to create right, that connectedness? And when we look at what Snoop did in Kansas, he came out, he had strippers on the poles. He was shooting cash out in the audience. Why? Because it gets those Kansas kids hype. You guys know what I'm talking about. Those Kansas kids are like, what is going on? Snoop is throwing money at us. There's strippers coming down from the roof. It's Kansas. He was forming a connection with them. He knew what they liked. Ba ba ba! He's going hard, right? Shooting money out. Who doesn't want that? Some of you guys get into the interview and you go clamshell. Or turtle shell. What do you want to call it? Like this? Well, I hope you don't see me, notice me. Go big. And as our preacher said, I'm going to pull it up. Be more than a number. Some of you guys rest on your numbers. But at the end of the day, the big separator is that medical schools want people they're going to want to have around. And there's a lot of students, and you guys will meet them on the interview trail, who you're like, man, I would hate to have to sit in the classroom with this person for four years. Do you not think the interviewers are saying the same thing? So if you're going to be in the interview, it's not the time to clam up. It's the time to bring it. It's the time to give them the best. This is your one opportunity to show them how great you are. What if this is the one time someone gets to see Snoop and he doesn't bring Snoop to the table? I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. This is like the, what I thought of <laughs> this is, I was, as my wills were, were churning here. Who knows who Charlie Wilson is? Another Snoop connection here. Who knows who Charlie, Charlie Wilson is? Come on, guys. We gotta know who Charlie Wilson is. Charlie, first name Charlie, last name Wilson. I know you're doing tonight, right? Come on, Charlie Wilson. He is the lead singer of the Gap Band. If you guys didn't know, outstanding, um, party train. I mean, there's a bunch of hits. I love me some Charlie Wilson, right? He sang on "Beautiful" with Snoop, right? Charlie Wilson. So anyway. So last year, Shannon and I, if you guys don't know Shannon, Shannon's my wife. Shannon's also a Charlie Wilson weirdo. Shannon loves R&B like no one's ever loved R&B. Like, she made me take her to, what was it, B2K, the Millennium Tour? I don't know what it was. B2K and all those ruckus people. I, I, was, I was sick to my stomach, B2K on the stage. But <laughs> she loves R&B. So we're going to Charlie Wilson. We're, I'm excited. She's excited. We're at Charlie Wilson. She's ready to go. She's like, oh my gosh, I'm here all my jams. And then Charlie Wilson came out, and he didn't do any of the jams. He only did his new stuff from his new album. And if you've heard Charlie Wilson's recent album, it was not good. Not the greatest. And everyone, literally, people were leaving early from the concert because 
he had created, right? We were, we were all there to be wowed and to see a certain thing and we weren't getting that. On the interview, it's the same thing. They're expecting you to wow them, to bring it. This is the time to play your greatest hits. Don't hit me with the unknown tune. Don't hit me with the low lights. Don't be like trying to explain, well, I don't know if you saw this in my transcript, but I have several Fs. Oh, a whole lot of them. And those Fs, let me tell you about those Fs. Fs? F is for failure. I got a lot of failure on my transcript. Why would you bring something up that's negative if they don't bring it up? Now's not the time. Bring the highlights. Bring your A game. Bring the best you got to the table to make that positive impact. Does that make sense to everybody? That's the distinguished part. Bring your A game to the table. We're gonna be distinct, we're gonna be distinguished, we're gonna get into medical school. Questions about that real quick. I'm way over time, we're at 21 minutes. I meant to do 10 minutes. But I gotta start talking about Charlie Wilson and B2K. I got a little bit excited. I got a little angry about the B2K, a little excited about Charlie Wilson. Okay, that's interviewing in a nutshell. Be distinct. Be distinguished. And part of that being distinct is being yourself and then recognizing that what makes you yourself and what makes you different is appreciated. And then when you come in there, be outstanding. Be your best self. Don't talk yourself down. Don't not show out. This is your time to show out and show them how great you are. All right, guys. That is interviewing. And if you guys want to really, really, really have a complete grasp and handle on the interview, and know exactly what you're doing, and have the steps to get at it, and know what to expect, and be take, able to take control of the interview, you should check out my medical school interview course. Check it out. Check out my medical school interview course. And uh, so this interview season, and that's why someone asked me this on my Instagram, they want to talk about this, I'll offer a medical school interview course discount. So if you guys, I'll put in the, I'll make a discount, and I'll put it in the box below right after this, um, but I'll do, We'll do 25% off uh, my medical school interview course. It's amazing. It's phenomenal. There's lots of mock interviews in there. You can see lots of good stuff. So check that out. My website is studenttransformation.com, um, and it's called How to Dominate the Medical School Interview, and I'll put a link to it, and I'll put a uh, discount code um, in the box below. Um, but otherwise, I hope everybody's having a great, great day. Right? Outstanding. Do -do 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 -do. I can't sing. You guys, I have literally, I have outstanding dance rhythm. I have horrible tone deafness when it comes to singing. I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> All right, so uh, I will see you guys um, soon. I'm going to try to do a lot more Facebook Live. So if you guys like this, please take time, comment, let me know. Hey, Dr. Pineset, I love when you go live. Talk about this. Okay? And let me know so that way I'm like, you know what? People appreciate this. Let me go ahead and take the time and sweat for them in my afternoon after I spend all day writing a grant and get you guys some information. So everyone, have a wonderful day. I will see you guys very, very soon. You know what it is. Dr. Pine said, I'm out, y'all. Today is the day, guys. No more excuses. No more complaining. You're going to take your future in your own hands. You're going to dominate. You're going to be successful. Get to my website, studenttransformation.com. I challenge you, what are you going to do today to make your life better?